Howdy everybody, this is Jane Nicole Designs. My name is Eileen Winton, and today we are going to be in the mood for Easter. I decided, um, since it's so close to Valentine's Day and um, projects and things like that I've done in the back there, I am ready to move on to um, Easter. And Easter is one of my favorite holidays. Um, and I like to decorate uh, my table uh, for special occasions and things like that. So I am going to move from Valentine's Day to um, springtime Easter. And I think um, what we're going to be doing today is is going to be easy enough to to, uh, to do really quickly and um, be able to enjoy the holiday. Uh, so today I'm going to be doing some painting and I'm going to be doing some uh, cording with, um, I wouldn't say I'm not macrame because I'm not really knotting anything, but I'm using the, the macrame um, uh, string for it. So uh, we will be doing that a little bit later. So um, letting a few people get on and then we will get started. But I uh, just wanted to say thank you so much for all your guys' um, support and help and encouragements as I've been doing my lives. I think this is about my 10th live. I was going back um, looking at some of the ones that, that I did in the, in the beginning and um, Actually, right now I'm uh, uploading them to YouTube. So if um, you are so inclined and you want to do a Jane Nicole Designs marathon uh, on YouTube, uh, most of my videos are, are up there. I'm just finishing up for the last few of them um, in the next day or so. So you are welcome to join in on YouTube at Jane Nicole Designs. And like I said, marathon away. <laughs> so um, today is one of those days. It is February 2nd, and I know I'm dating myself in my video, but it is a wonderful day today. My parents, Jan and Ron, are celebrating their anniversary today. So I just want to say a huge I love you and happy anniversary. Hope you guys are going to be going out to dinner or celebrating in some way today, but a huge happy anniversary to you, Mom and Dad. I appreciate and love you guys. So... That was one of the biggest shout outs today. I was so excited to be able to um, to um, announce that. I, I We are part of our marriage team um, at our church and I love marriage um, related and um, activities and things like that. Uh, my husband and I, we do the um, premaritals for the, the um, program and I love it. It is super fun to be able to come along people and to encourage and to spur one another on. And um, like I said, it just, it's my jam. I love it. I think it's its super fun. And to be able to serve with my husband, Jeffrey, I think um, it has been a huge blessing for us. So anyway, if you have an anniversary, if you know somebody who's having an anniversary today, go ahead and in the comments, shout out what what their um, names are and how many years. Um, I know my parents are like, I wanna say 55 or 56. I'm not positive. Um, but uh, anyway, so what today we're gonna be doing is a little bit of painting and um, I'm gonna give you a sneak peek of, of the second project if we get a little bit of time. This is with the, um, the cording that we have and this is the gentleman bunny and this is the girl bunny. So we're gonna be doing a little bit of, uh, if we have time to do that today. So, okay, I'm gonna get started. I wanted to tell you that um, I'm more into, if I use something, if I can revamp it, if I can um, make it, uh, you know, two different holidays or whatever, that's me. Um, so for the holidays, uh, for Christmas, I got these little wooden rounds and they were super cute. I got them off of Amazon. They came in a pack of about 50 of them. And I used them. I put, um, you know, sayings and whatnot and attached them to gifts and um, inside of cards and whatnot. And so it was one of those where I thought, you know what? I love this idea, but now I need to redesign it in some way. And so today what we're going to be redesigning by using these, I want to make sure that I get it. There we go. This is going to be our Easter um, garland that we're going to be putting. And I know these are super popular right now. So I wanted to show you um, 
where we're going and uh, we're gonna be I'll show you a couple tips and tricks about um, how I put this together and um, what what I did for the, for the um, fabric and the beads and things like that because the beads as you can see them right here they're just they're just natural wood and so I have a couple ideas for you to help um, be able to do that so um, let's get started so come along with me um, the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to put this off to the side and I'll make sure that you can kind of see it so that we, you know, you know where we're going. There we go. Let's make it so you can see a little bit about it. Okay, so <clears throat> the first couple things that I'm going to do is I'm going to paint. And um, the colors I'm going to be using today, this is a uh, Waverly paint and I got it at Walmart. And sorry about it being backwards, a nightmare for crafters to switch their cameras. And I don't really, to be honest, know how to do it. So um, if you do know, let me know in the comments. Um, so this is Waverly. This is ballet slippers. And then this one is celery. And this is all Waverly paint. Um, to get the, the yellow that I really wanted for the little chick there, I actually added some uh, Making Memories scrapbook uh, paint. And so we're gonna do, do, do that with the, um, the cashew and um, kind of mix it together and make, make what paint um, color I was going for. So today we're gonna be using three of them. So this is just one round for the chick. Um, this one here, this is going to be our, um, it's just an egg with the polka dots on it. I did um, a little bit of uh, vinyl and I will show you how I did that. So we're gonna use that one there. And then this one's so cute. I love this. This one is um, just a round, but then I took, these are just little rounds that I got at Michael's and we are going to, we're gonna, whoop, let's flip it this way. We're gonna give it some bunny ears. Isn't that so cute? I love it. I was, I was on Pinterest and I'm like, we can do this. I, I think I can figure this out. So um, we will do that this morning. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna take the paint and we're gonna mix. I did get three brushes and all these are just from Walmart. I just went to Walmart, got some, some um, things. I like to do a project like this, to either do one that is totally just straight across or this one here is actually have a slant in it. Sorry about that. And then this one here is just a little bit fluffier, but it's a little um, more straight on the top as well. So I, cho I chose these. Um, probably something that would be a little bit harder to use would be, there we go, something like this. This might be a little bit um, harder to do the edges with. So go ahead and make sure that you have something that's a little bit uh, more square on the top. So, okay, all I did, this is just a paint can uh, or a, a, a top of a can I decided to use as my little paint spray. Um, and um, we are going to, let's make sure I, I these ones here, you do have to sh shake them up a little bit because they um, they are a little, almost like um, gel-like. They're, they're not super, super watery. So uh, we're gonna make sure that it's shook up. I know the celery, we're gonna be using that um, in a second here. The celery is one of those where um, you do have to shake that one up quite, quite a bit. Okay, I'm going to get enough for my the front of my round, and then I'm going to get three, or no, let's do four. We're going to get four of these beads, and these are just wooden beads I got off of Amazon. You can go on there and decide um, what size you want. I think this one is like a it's size 14, and I'm not really sure what that all means. But um, And then this I'm going to use to uh, paint on them. This is just a, a skewer for, you know, kebabs or whatever. So I actually am going to just put those on there, and then I will be painting these, and this is so much easier. So I'm going to get that ready. Let's see if I open it it might be a little more happy. Oh, there it is. It's right there. And I'm going to put it off to the side because I just want to blend it to get that, um, that yellow that from the chick. So 
Let's go. And I want to mix it all together first because I don't want any little um, of the cashew color just coming through. I want it all to be the same. And this does dry a little bit darker, so I'm gonna leave it a little bit lighter than what I'd like. You can decide what color you want. I mean, you can do a pink chick, I don't know, whatever you wanna do. So we're just going to um, paint the top of this. And this uh, round here, there is nothing on it. It is just plain. There, I didn't sand it, I didn't do anything. I just decided, you know what, if there's any um, imperfections, if you want to, you could sand it if you'd like. And I'm gonna go all the way out, all the way out to the, um, the bark. I'm gonna paint over the, there's a little hole in it, so I'm gonna paint over that as well. And if you wanted to, you could use like, you know, you can put a little ring around and leave a little bit of the natural wood if you'd like. But I, I decided in my first um, go at it, I went all the way out to the end. There we go. All right, and my handy dandy. Uh, let me get my handy dandy uh, baby wipes. When I craft, I love them. It's such a, I'm such a messy crafter, so I need, I need extra help. Okay, so that is our first one. We're going to just leave that there. We're going to let it dry. If I need to, I do have my um, embossing tool, which is kind of like heat gun. Um, we'll be able to uh, dry it off if I need to, but um, for right now, I'm just um, going to let it dry and we'll see how it goes. Um, these right here, if you put hot heat, I did my hair dryer and I turned it on high and it was like it started to pop and crack. And so I just want to make sure that these don't um, put big cracks in them. So I'm just going to leave them and see how long um, it's going to take. If we need to, we'll shoot it a little bit with the, um, the dryer, but I think it should be fine by the time we get to to each one. So what I'm doing is just going down each bead and I'd start from the top and then uh, work my way to each bead. And I just want to make sure that the top part of the bead here is all painted. And then I'm going to work my way halfway, about halfway down. And just make sure that there's not big globs because it does take, if you leave a big glob, it takes a little bit longer to dry. And I almost want them just, I kind of want a little bit for my taste, I want the, um, the wood to show through. So see how that goes. I'm just only doing about half of it. And what I love about this, the first time I tried this, I was, I was chasing them all over the place and I went to um, a, a gal that she, her name is Sarah and she owns Barn 31 in Post Falls, Idaho. And she's like, put them on a skewer. I'm like, how, thank you. So now I paint all my beads Barn 31 style. So there we go. I just put it all the way on there and then I'm just gonna turn it upside down and then we're gonna do the other side. And we're gonna do this to the other colors as well. And I kid you not, it goes quicker than you think, but um, like I said, it's easier just to put them on the skewer. I don't know if you have any, any ideas. Oh, good morning, Renee. It's so good to see that you're watching. I hope you're doing good today. Okay. So we are going to finish up, and if there's a little bit of, of um, wood showing through, you can go back later. Just make sure that, um, you know, you can go down the whole thing if you want. But um, I just make sure that there's no big globs. And then I have, um, on my desk, I have a jar of pens and pencils that I just kind of you're not gonna be able to see it, but I just stick it in there and it's just gonna sit and dry for a moment. And I'll go here. Today, I finally, I have, 
I have my water so we can clean our brushes immediately. And this, this um, paint with the scrapbooking um, making memories, I am not sure how it dries. So I wanna make sure that I clean my brush right away. Okay, so we're done with the, the chick for right now. Isn't he so fun? Um, now we are going to go for the fun, fun part. This is the little bunny, and these are gonna be the two ears. This is what it looks like. And I made, I'm gonna make it so this part is on the top. And then we're just gonna paint one of these rounds. And I'm gonna use, like I said before, this is uh, ballet slippers. It is from Waverly. I purchased it at uh, Walmart. Let's make sure I shake it up. And I'm just gonna actually just use another brush since I have already three of them here. And go ahead, just paint over the whole front. And if you'd like this chick, I um, with that paint, I did not do two coats. I only did one. If you'd like to, you can do more than one coat. But um, Waverly paint is pretty, this is a, a a matte finish and let me look here it is not really a chalk paint but um, it covers so well so sometimes I just don't feel like I just don't feel like I need to have two of them <laughs> so we're gonna and for time's sake we're gonna do one and I'm just gonna make sure that it is completely um, covered And if you want to, you like I said before, you can leave a, a little rim around there or you can go right to the bark trim. It is no big deal. You can decide. Okay, so we're gonna set this off to the side. And then th for what I did for this, I'm just gonna go ahead, dip my paintbrush in, and we're only gonna go like about that far down because we're gonna glue these on to the, um, round and so to save on paint um, I didn't go all the way down you could if you want to you're totally welcome to there we go and I'm just twirling the brush that's why I like this square brush it is a really big help when I'm painting okay so that's about how far we're gonna go down and we're gonna do the other one Let's see, let's do it. Should we do it that way? Yeah, I think so. It's got a little bit of bark that's kind of um, wisping off the side and I think that's cute. I, I don't know if the bunny is a girl or a boy, but we'll, we'll call it a her because she's pink. Right. Let me know where you're watching from and um, also, if you're watching on the replay, that'll be after this. I'll post it with all the links of the supplies. Put in there hashtag replay, and um, then I will I will know. And I do go back. I've told you that before. I do go back and and make sure what I say is right. Amend if I need to. Um, I am not the most eloquent speaker, nor do I have um, a a vast, vast uh, craft knowledge. So I just want to make sure that everything I say is truthful. <laughs> so, all right, there it is. We're only going to go part way down and we're going to let that sit for a second. And then let's get our beads. We're going to do the pink for this, um, the beads here. Like I said, here's my skewer. I'm just going to put these down the skewer and like this one here, it doesn't fit. So I'm going to pick one that fits. Because I know if it doesn't fit on this, it's not going to fit on um, my uh, my uh, string that I'm going to be using to um, string the the um, garland. Oh boy, I do have. Um, let's use a different skewer. This has has a hot glue on it too. So there we go. Too much hot glue, I guess. There we go. Okay, so that's our, our beads. We're gonna put the pink paint on there. And 
And like I said, just start at the top. Make sure that you get all the way around the top and go about halfway down. Make sure you have lots of paint. I like make sure I have lots of paint on my brush. And then, like I said, go about halfway down. And then when we're finished doing the fourth one there, then we'll flip them over. And then uh, we'll paint the other side. There we go. Okay, so that's what it looks like. So all I'm going to do is flip them over. And when you're doing your project, if you find any little spots every once in a while when I'm painting beads like this, I find little, um, you know, spots where I didn't get enough paint. And all I just do is go back and touch it up. It's super easy to do that. So, and if you're kind of in a hurry, I know um, it would be really pretty too if you're going to be doing some type of a, of a gray, almost a marble. I've seen where um, they've taken uh, just little pieces of or, or paint and squiggled down the beads so that it looks like a gray marble. And it's really pretty because the um, natural wood shows through and then there's these little uh, gray lines. It, it's really pretty. So, like I said, these beads um, I got on Amazon and they came in a big bag and I just put them in a little bowl and I've just been using them up. Um, the cool thing about garland is you can use it for any, any holiday. They're quite popular right now. And I've seen them um, use them as ornaments and then, you know, on your fireplace decorating. I have one that's in my guest room that just, um, I have a, a beach theme in my guest room and I have a, a tassel that's on the end of it. So, okay. We're going to just put this down to the side here. We'll let that dry. And then now we are on for the fun one here. This is um, just my rendition of, okay, I, I couldn't think of a third animal that was a different color. And this green really matched the, the um, cashew and this, uh, the slippers, the um, ballet slippers. So I was thinking, okay, what's green? And um, I was thinking a carrot, but then the carrot... I didn't want orange on here, um, so I just wanted to stay pretty uh, muted colors. So what I did is I took and I um, took a piece of vinyl, and I will show you uh, how we're going to do this. And I put the vinyl on there, and then I'm going to paint around the outside of it. So it's almost like a stencil. And I'm going to use um, outdoor vinyl. It's um, 3M. And uh, the cool thing is, and here's a good tip. Um, I have, when uh, we were in Washington, we lived by a sign making company and the sign making company, uh, sign making company had extra um, vinyl that was just kind of laying around. And so I went to them and I said, hey, any, um, if you have any extra laying around that's not going to be used on a project or if it's leftover, can I buy it from you? And they were like, absolutely. It's just sitting here and gathering dust. And so um, I... I got a bunch of different colors and um, I, I bought, I think I told you, but I bought them donuts and cause they didn't want me to pay them. And so um, I have been using that vinyl for, oh goodness, probably about five years. They're just um, all sorts of different shapes and colors and sizes. And so um, this one here is scotch, I believe. Yes, it is scotch and it's like 220, but it's just an outdoor vinyl. You can go to Michael's, you can go to, um, uh, any type of, of crafting area in the store, uh, even uh, now Walmart has it. So good morning, Amy. It's good to see you. Um, so you can be able to get vinyl anywhere. And this is just outdoor vinyl. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this image. I went to my Cricut. I cut out, I cut out the uh, egg. And I just want to show you really quick how easy it is to be able to do this. And if you don't have um, a Cricut, the, the cool thing you could do is do stickers so that it's the image of a sticker, the outline. Um, but if you want to go in and detail, I need to get my, my old ladies on to be able to see this. I want to make sure that I don't pick out something I shouldn't. Um, but if you want to make sure that you get um, 
you know, some of the stickers already have silhouettes and things like that. If you don't have a Cricut, um, you're welcome to use that as well. But I just thought, you know what, it's really um, a neat idea to be able to, to use my Cricut in more ways than one. So, and I'm just making sure, I, I always put the extra vinyl off on the side because I don't want a rogue piece of vinyl to hit whatever I'm doing. Every once in a while, I will have that. And um, if you're doing heat press vinyl, it sticks there and stays there. And it's just a habit of mine to, to be able to take that off. All right. And I know if you're watching in a little bit, I will be drawing for the explosion box that we um, had on the giveaway this, this last week. So I have all the names in my little bucket and we will draw for that in a little while. So I hope that you will enjoy whoever gets that. Um, it was super easy, fun to make. I really enjoyed it. And then I did I actually did finish the one that we did last week on the live and I put it, it is up in my Etsy store. So if you uh, want that one, I am going to, um, I am going to part with my favorite, favorite uh, pack of paper and um, be able to bless somebody with it. So, okay, there we go after all those dots. So that's what it looks like. I'm going to take this right here. This is shelf paper. And all you do is, you know, when you align your, your kitchen uh, drawers and shelves and stuff like that, that you want to protect them. I just bought a roll of clear. And so that's what I'm going to do. This is just the little clear shelving stick them. I'm not sure what you call it, but go ahead and I'm going to make sure I've got the right tool here. And I'm just gonna press it down and make sure that it stays where it needs to. Okay, so here's the top. I wanna make sure that would be a tragedy if it was upside down. And you're just gonna pull this back. See how that goes? Super easy, I love it. And then I'm gonna flip it so it's not crooked here. I am going to just center it in the middle going to center it in the middle of my piece of wood and you see the holes right there and I actually did that so now when you look at it there might be a little dot so that it looks like there's another little dot on the top and just make sure that everything's down and I know this is a big image but if you're doing um, uh, things with um, like letters and whatnot you do want to make sure that this is this is all the way down and the wood is a little bit dusty and things like that. So you just want to make sure that it stays on your project. So I just pull at a 40, 45 degree angle or so, and then just pull it all the way back. So um, the paper, because the wood or the sticky stuff, because the wood is there, is it's not reusable. Um, if I were doing a project that was um, not wood, I would reuse that but this is what we got. So, all right, let's put our other one away. Now we are ready. I'm gonna make sure I use a, um, like I said before, the flat brush. Oh, good, it is, it is definitely um, shook up. So, just so you guys can see, I'm just gonna put it right over the top. And just make sure, I wouldn't push like 45 degree, um, just go right over the top so that you don't get um, any bleeding underneath. But like I said, it's Scotch brand. This is really nice vinyl. So that is how you do it. And then I'm gonna go around the outside, making sure that I don't um, go underneath my stencil. But like I said, it's pretty, it's pretty sticky. This one here is uh, a little bit lighter paint and um, so I am gonna just, I will do two coats on this one so that it mirrors what we already have, the darkness of the other two colors that we painted already. But I wanna make sure, there we go, that I don't get too far outside on the, the um, edge of my paper and I do, or my, um, piece of wood and I do load up my brush 
and that gives me a good crisp line and then I'll go back into the inside and get rid of the excess. So let me know if you have made a garland before like this, or you have used um, the wooden beads before. I think they're a pretty popular craft right now. I know I was trying to get some the other day at Michael's and they were out. So, all right, we're gonna let that dry for a second and we're gonna paint our beads. So getting my skewer and making sure, nope, that one doesn't fit. Yep, there we go. Oh, I thought this one didn't have a, a hole in it, but yep, yep, it does. Okay, so um, like I said before, third time's a charm, but we're gonna go and start at the top. Go all the way down, about halfway at least. Making sure that um, it's not too glumpy, clumpy. And like I said, I'm with this project, if I see a little bit of the wood showing through, I'm okay with that. So let me know what you guys are up to today. Today is one of those for us. It is beautifully sunny and I am so thankful. It has been very gloomy here in the last couple weeks. And, but here's the big thing. I woke up this morning and it was 12 degrees. So although it is beautiful, it is freezing over here. And um, we still have snow that has not left from Christmas and it's still crunchy. The poor dog has to play catch, jumping over a bunch of clumps of, of um, ice sometimes. So we are gonna be very thankful when it goes away. But how are you guys doing? Morning, David. It's good to see that you're watching. How are you? It's been a while since I've uh, seen your name. That's awesome. Okay, so we're almost done here. We're gonna do the other half of the beads, making sure that everything is all covered to your liking. That's the good, that's the good thing. We just kind of Oh, you got foggy, Renee. Oof, I don't know about that one. I think I'd rather have cold than fog because I'm not very good at driving in fog. <laughs> and let's see. Oh, Aunt Amy, you've got clouds. Well, yes, I, I am done with the clouds. My husband and I were like, okay, let's go vacation somewhere that, where it's not freezing and there's not, you know, but... I think we'll have to plan that for next year. So I'm just gonna put it off to the side here. We're just gonna make sure that that dries a little bit. Okay, and it looks like it's still a little bit wet. And you know what? I like the fact that the one coat, I actually like it that way. So I think we're gonna keep it, keep it that way. Um, what we're gonna do is I'm going to just pull up the top of the egg. Make sure that I don't get anything else on my project and make sure that you have clean hands. <laughs> but this is what it does. Isn't that super cool? And it's one of those where it's just a little paint and a sticker and I think it turned out great. So we will put that off to the side for just a little bit and we'll um, kind of just let this stuff um, dry we want to make sure that um, like I said we need clean hands um, but we also want to make sure that this is dried so that um, when we start uh, putting the uh, garland together um, we don't have uh, paint on our, our materials so so while that's drying a little bit I'm gonna show you uh, um, what we're gonna do for the garland and how this is gonna work, let me clean up my, I'm, I'm a clean freak. I don't like to have too much, I'm a messy one, but I like to make sure that, that when it make a mess, I clean it up. But, um, so this is what I used for the ribbon on the garland. This is just fabric. And 
I don't know if, uh, if Close to My Heart does this any longer, but they actually took, with their scrapbooking stuff, they took material and put it in some of their paper packs. So this is a paper pack around about, mm, I'd say 2010. <laughs> so it's a little old, but um, no, more like 2015. But anyway, they did that. And I just had squares just laying around. So I know that you can go to, um, Walmart has them. You can, you know, just get a little square. And it was, it was about, I'd say 30, a 12 by 12 ish. Cause, um, with these ones I used, uh, with the project here. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a, a scissors and I'm just going to be consistent with the ones that I did before. I, these are the little notches here. I probably cannot see that, but I'm going to go every four four notches and then just go ahead and rip. So I'm going to make four of these for each one. And um, we'll clean them up a little bit when, when we put them on the um, garland. But this is super easy. I'm not a big sew sewing person. So one, two, three, four. Um, I, I can, I can mend things, but I don't, I mean, and when my girls were really small and Emma and my niece, Melissa were really small, my sister, Christine and I, we decided to be ambitious and make kids clothes. And I think I sewed the pants upside down so that the crotches were, it was terrible and the front was not right. And so, um, from that, I think I was scarred. <laughs> do very very many um sewing projects so i kind of try and keep my sewing projects to either gluing them or just um quick mending projects so i'm not very good at reading a um pattern although my grandmother um she was amazing with um with sewing she would make her own patterns out of um newspaper and I do have some of those they're super cool um when they when uh, both of them passed away um I was able to get some of the patterns and then she actually still had uh, fabric pinned on the pattern so I have kept those I haven't I'm not taking them apart they're an awesome memory so um yeah I I wished that that would have uh, uh rubbed off on me but I did not get that gene <laughs> I, I got the more crafty from my, from my mom than um, from my dad's side of the family, but that's okay. I, I improvise and and um, make sure that that if I need sewing, um, yeah, we we try. Okay, so all I'm doing is just pulling them on each end. I'm just making sure that there's some you know flyaways and there's some uh, threads that are just hanging off on the side. And um, I just want to make sure that when I'm going to be tying them on my garland, it is kind of cumbersome when they, they are just laying around. So I'm going to pull those off and make sure that we are okay. All right. So I'm going to put these off to the side because we are going to be using those shortly. And now I think, yep. We're getting pretty, pretty dry here. So this right here is the chick and I think it is the cutest thing in the world. I saw um, a few ideas and then I revamped them, redesigned what I was looking for because of course I didn't have all the supplies and I didn't want to go out and buy um, more supplies. So I'm just using what I, I have. So I decided these are little Google eyes. We're going to use those. And then this, I, I, we were uh, Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head for, for um, Halloween. And so I um, used this on the, the costume. And so this is just a scrap piece of felt. And I'm gonna cut off a corner, but that's ginormous. So I'm gonna just trim it to where, where I think that I'm gonna go. It's still quite large. There we go. So. I'm just going to do a simple face and we will put these on here. And I like to keep the eyes right on top of the felt. It just, I, if you move them up, they kind of, they get lost. It, it, 
it, it's to my liking, I guess. So I'm going to put this on with glue. This is my handy dandy glue gun from Walmart. You know I love my glue gun, so I won't talk too much about it other than it is a must. Go and get one. Let me see here. I also have, yep, here it is. This is a Making Memories, yep. And it's a uh, tweezers. And uh, I use it quite a bit because I don't want to uh, burn myself. So we're just gonna put a little bit on there and then you can just set it down. Oh, there we go. There we go. And let's see if I can do this without squishing. It looks like I squished it. Let me try this again. This is a fail. I'm gonna take this off because it went weird. <laughs> I think the heat made the eye get squished. So I guess we're gonna go rogue and see if I can do this without squishing it. Let's see if I put the piece, there we go. Let's do it this way. I'm gonna put the glue down there first. There we go. And then we're just gonna rock it right in the piece of glue. There we go. Isn't that the cutest thing ever? Okay, so then I have some, some uh, feathers. And I'm actually pulling some of it apart. It was a big, big, huge feather, and I don't think that we need all that much. So I'm just gonna trim a little bit. Yeah, I'm just gonna trim a little bit and then we'll glue it down. I'm going to put it right above, right above the hole on the top. Isn't that so fun? I love it. <laughs> All right. Okay. And then this is how I made the, the little uh, wings. So you see those little wings right there? I have tons and tons of flowers. And this is a flower I just pulled apart. And I put them in a little box and I use them for scrapbooking and all sorts of things. And all I'm going to do is cut three. So that's three. And then this is two of the petals here. And I'm just going to lay one on there with my glue gun. Right there. And I'll turn it around in just a second. But I want to make sure it doesn't look crazy. Too crazy, I should say. There we go. And I just layered one on top of another. Isn't that cool? I love it. So flowers are feathers. <laughs> In my eyes, that's what I did today. So like I said, I'm going to go and cut two of them off. Make sure you get all the way through. There we go. And we're just going to layer the three on the bottom there. And you know me, I love to go work from the bottom up and that's what we're doing. We got our foundation and now we're just embellishing each piece and then we'll put it all together. There we go. Isn't he, she, I don't know. Isn't that cute? It's so awesome. <laughs> Good morning, Denise. That's awesome. Good to see ya. Okay, so here's our, our chick. We already have our Easter egg. He, we're not gonna do a whole lot with him. I think we're gonna do a little bit of a, a um, flower and a gem. So let's put together our bunny. And so when you do this, make sure that the hole is, um, you're able to thread the, um, the line through the hole. So I'm just gonna position it around. I think I want, the little one on the left. Nope, going the other way. So I want to make sure that I my um, my bunny I can thread it through the the string that I have, and I'm just going to load it up with a couple squirts of glue here, 
and then I'm just gonna set it down on the 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 ears and we're gonna hold it there for a minute I'm gonna turn it a little bit so see how that is isn't that so cute so you would have never have thought a couple pieces of wood and bam you got a you got a bunny so this is what it looks like in the back and if you wanted to you're totally welcome to um, uh, go ahead and um, paint uh, like the chick I painted um, both sides of the chick uh, but for you know time sake and whatnot you're welcome to do that you totally could I think that would be a, you know a really nice addition to the to um, you know if the the garland is moving around that you could see the end you know in the back there so you're totally welcome to do that okay so for the bunny we're gonna still do the same eyes let's see where's our bunny we're, this is where we're going and then um, all I did is I just took now you could do you could do teeth you could do all sorts of things on the bunny um, but uh, let's let's make the heart first I'm just gonna take a piece of felt and this is just a little scrap and I'm just gonna do a tiny little heart and I need to round it off here it's pretty pretty pointy here on the top and that's one thing that's cool you don't have to worry about it. you could do a little you could do a cute little um, bead for his nose you could do an, another little um, sticker or anything like that I think it would be really cute but like I said I'm not very crafty as far as drawing wise so this was the this was the best I could do instead of, you know, teeth and all that kind of stuff. I was just like, ah, forget it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a heart cause I'm okay with doing that. But drawing, I'm not very good. My hands are super shaky. So drawing things like that, eh. Okay, we're gonna put the eyes on. Put the eyes, and so we got the googly eyes. And then um, for the last part, I just took a piece of ribbon and this is how I did the ribbon. Go ahead and just cut off the side. And I usually just put my thumb here because this is what I want. Um, this is what I want my uh, tail, how long I want it to be. And then I'm just gonna make a loop and then up over the top. And then right where my finger is, that's where I'm gonna stuff this little end here. And that's how I get pull. And that's how I get my little bow. So that means that I don't have to cut a piece and then trim and trim and trim. Um, it's all ready for me. And that's how I usually do my little bows that I'm going to do on cards and all sorts of, you know, if you have a craft project that you need to do a little accent bow on. And the cool thing is, you see it? It's, um, there we go. It's two-sided, so you can use it either way. So I can decide whether I want the bow, but like I said, and then I'm just gonna put that down to the side. And we got our glue gun string. Let's get those off on the side. And there we go. She's ready. Okay, so now we've got all of our pieces. We're ready. Um, and let's check. And it looks like, yep, our beads are pretty well dry. Looks like, yep. They're ready to go. Yep, these are all dry as well. So it's time to put this together. And you know me, I'm the, I'm the foundation up. So uh, what I did is just to show you about the garland, I, I did half of it because I, I repeated the, the process twice. And so um, I wanted to make sure that you all were able to see the process. And so um, the the string that I used, this is it. Um, it came with the beads that I, that I got and it was like, oh yay, there's a freebie. Um, but you could use any type of jute or uh, this is cording. Um, it's, this is too big, but you could get something that's smaller. So um, the sky's the limit as far as what you want to put and use as your garland. Um, 
you could also use ribbon if you wanted to just to just to keep it going i i don't um you know there's no certain per perfect preference and so i'm just going to go ahead and thread this through and i'll show you what i did we don't need our glue gun anymore let's scoot this off to the side and you do want to if you have one um have any type of a poke because uh, we're going to be pushing some of the stuff through um, a small area so we want to make sure that it goes smoothly um, so what I did is I just uh, I just took off enough because I didn't want this to be while I was uh, threading things you know you won't be able to put that on there so I just wanted to make sure that I had enough garland um, thread so let's untangle this and then um, I will show you a trick that I learned that makes it, I, I struggled. Oh, I struggled trying to get all these different um, things together. And I'm like, okay, let's make this a little bit easier. So I took a roll of, of um, electrical tape and I'm gonna tape the end. So yeah, it's, it's super easy to do it this way. So go ahead and just pick off a little piece and then we're just gonna attach it to the end and that's kind of almost like our needle. You don't need a ton of it. But go ahead and just put it on the end here. You can trim it if it gets too large. See that? I'm just gonna trim it a little bit. And then that will help me thread, roll it like that. See that? That'll help me thread all of this. So I want to make sure that when I thread this, I'm going to go in the same in the same progression as I did before. And I will show you. Um, I do need my trivet because I used on my trivet I used these two um, marks right here as my guide in between um, my little wooden rounds. So I will use that. To help me out there we go and so I want to make sure that my my string is all right so I want to make sure that which way my um, my piece of, of wood is going the same way and so I'm going to start with um, the progression here this is the egg I want it to go on the same spot so what I did is I took here and went, okay, that's about it. So it might be a little cumbersome because this is so long, but we're gonna work with it. All right, so I want it facing this way. So I'm gonna thread, thread my garland so that it does that. And let's make sure, nope, nope, <laughs> go back. We do not want, we do not want um, tragedy that way. My craft projects, I at least want to make sure that they're going the correct way. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna do that. And then I'm gonna pick up, there's a couple extra, the, the, the natural ones that I'm going to be using as well. So how I did this, let's get one that, yep. So I thread through. And I'm gonna go all the way to where I'm supposed to for this this bead to, to stay because I put a little loop through it so that it is stationary. Um, you could totally fill up the garland and make it so that you can, um, so that, that you don't have to um, have any gaps and things like that. But I wanted it to look a little bit different. I put the Eileen spin on it. And then I'm gonna take it, once it's the, where I want it to be, I'm just gonna thread it right through the end of the bead there. And this is where I, the pokey tool works really well. So I just poked it through and made sure that it's gonna stay in the same spot. And then just pull it, make sure. And you can always move it a little bit there we go. So that's to my liking. And then I pull it pretty tight 
And then now I'm just going to go on the progression of um, the beads that I that I'm painting here. So, like I said, sometimes it's better just to get that little pokey tool. And then we are going to do, so now it's it's got the two on there. Now we're gonna start with the uh, pieces of fabric. And go ahead, I'm just gonna do a loop. And I wanna make sure it's gonna go the right way. So the loop goes down at the bottom and then I'm just gonna pull it right through. So there's that little hole there. And then I'm gonna gently pull it because I don't want it too tight. I almost want it to look like a tie. And that's just to my liking. See that? So that's what it looks like. So I just want each to make sure I have a little bit of room to do that. And then I'm gonna do the pink bead. Let's just pull these. So I don't have to struggle each time. So the pink bead goes next and then the yellow tassel goes after that. And like I said, loop goes down just like this. We'll put it right where I want it. Push the, the ends through and then just tug it until it it's to your liking. There we go. We're going to pull it a little bit. And then after that, we're going to do the yellow. And then we're going to put another wooden one on there. Sometimes if you twist it too, it helps to be able to do that. There we go. And to make that one stay where I want it to, just go ahead from where this is at and just feed it back through. Use your poker or some whatever you want to use. Make sure it goes through. There we go, so you can see it. And then there we go. So that's what I did. You could add um, fabric in between all of these beads if you want to. Um, you're welcome to decide what you want to do on that. It is your choice. Let's see. Next, we're going to put the um, the bunny. Make sure the bunny is going the right way. We'll put it right through. And then I'm going to use my there we go we're gonna put it right there so you can decide where how far you want or if you you don't want to you can just completely fill up the the garland with beads let me know any um, other holidays you would think that hmm I don't know, I've seen some Valentine's ones that are really pretty. They've got some hearts on them. Um, let me know if you've seen different garlands. I know they're, most of them are just um, plain colors and things like that. But when this came to mind, you know how you get something in your mind, you're like, okay, I really wanna do this. And this is how I'm gonna do it. Um, I think this will end up on my fireplace because it is so cute. I think it's awesome. And like I said, I'm not a huge Valentine. This Valentine's Day, my husband is going to be on a business trip. So, um, but we in the past, I don't know how do you how do you guys celebrate uh, Valentine's Day? We. Um, we in the past have done um, steak dinners with our daughters. Um, they look at us and they're like, 
mom, dad, Valentine's is single awareness day. And so we're like, no, we don't want you to feel left out because mom and dad are celebrating. Um, and my husband does an awesome job of treating me like it's Valentine's every day. So um, sometimes it's one of those right things, oh, the Hallmark holiday, you know, oh, you have to go get flowers and I'm not a huge flower person. So I would rather get craft supplies than a, than a bouquet of flowers. <laughs> um, and the other thing too is that um, flowers don't stay around as long as, as I would like them to, unless they're fake. So um, I always tell them, hey, I would love to um, just get a card and or um, something like that instead of, oh, and a craft supply would be awesome too. <laughs> hey Abby, it's good to see you're watching. So, all right, we're going to, almost done here with, with the uh, garland. We're gonna put one more row on, and then I will put the chick on there, and then we'll, we'll tie it up. But getting back to the, uh, the, uh, the Valentine's Day thing, I think I'm going to be doing a girl marathon of watching, um, I don't know, something, something girly. We'll see. Okay, so make sure, and I showed you this before, but I want to make sure that you decide where you want to put this beads and whatnot. If you want the bead to stay stationary, go ahead and thread it through twice and that makes it um, makes it stay where it's at. So I want to go back a little bit farther. As I say, the cool thing about doing this project, it's very customized and see how that is if you don't get a lot of the um, threads off of the the pieces of fabric it does like to play around with the uh, where when you put your beads on so i do make sure that i try and get off as much of the um as much of the, the extra threads as i can all right so we're going to put the last one on and get this in here it's a smaller hole there we go. So we're gonna put our chick on. She is so cute. I might have to make another one and do like napkin rings or something like that. I think to uh, go on my tablescape, I think that would be really cute. Put some jute around it and tie your, um, tie your napkins up with a cute little chick. Make sure it's where I want it to stay. Okay, and we just have a few more things to do and then we'll be done. And um, when you decide to do a garland, make sure that you do have extra uh, string going on. If you don't, sometimes um, you could add a couple inches with a bow or something like that. But um, for this project, I wanted to make sure that I had ample room on each side because I don't know exactly um, how long I'm going to be needing this. So I'm just going to leave it long on this one side and be able to um, see where is our next brush steer. Yep, the pink one. Um, this would be really cute as a bassinet. Um, or a you know in a baby's room could you see this I could totally see this as a as a as a girl a girl project but like I said the sky is the limit on what what you can make each garland so awesome okay 
So coming on the home stretch here, and I didn't, um, I made sure that my, my garland wasn't too tight. You can decide how tight you want that. Um, and you could put double if you want to. You could put a couple different fabrics together and, um, or you can put any type of um, ribbon and things like that. I think it would be, it, you know, like I said, the sky's the limit on this one. But I just wanted to show you what was in my head as far as the idea. Okay, so I'm just gonna put the last, the last one on here. Let's see, make sure it gets around. Let's see if it'll go double through. Okay, it's not going double through, so I'm gonna take my poker and rotor rooter and see if it'll open up more. Nope, okay, so this is a no-go. We will save that for a different project. Let's get one that has a larger, oh, there we go, this one has a larger opening. That's one thing about these, they're very au naturel. So they, some of them are pretty true to size and then some um, you may have to use in other projects or, or um, other ways. Okay, now I'm gonna make sure that it's the size that I want. Um, just like this one here, I just tied a little loop on it just to make sure um, when I use the project, if, if I need to um, adjust the, um, the spacing and whatnot, I could just tie it just like this and use this right here and not use the extra, but um, we'll see how it goes. But this, this is it. And I will, let me flip it around so you can see, but this is the progression of it. Just the um, egg and then the bunny. Here's the little chick and then progression. So tell me what you think of it. Is it something that you will um, see if you can duplicate? I would love to see what you, um, what your mind thinks up as far as how that one is. Um, the last thing I'm gonna do on here is we have a little flower and a gem on the, the egg. And like I said, I just have these little flowers I take off from different um, flower bunches and I put them in a little box. And I'm just gonna put it right down on the side. And then this is, um, I think it's from, I wanna say I got it at the dollar store. It's KI Memories. And this is just a bunch of little gems. So I'm gonna just open this up and get a gem out of here that will match. I'm gonna do um, orange to keep the Easter thing going on. And these are already have sticky on the back. If you need to, you can um, use heat, the hot glue gun, you're welcome to do that. So, okay, there it is, it is done. Um, I will in the um, in the top of the description. I will take a picture of it when I put it up and show you all what it looks like. And um, like I said, let me know how how you would revamp or add to or different holiday um, a garland. I think these are super fun to be able to use them for your decorating. So, okay, really quick. Um, I'm thinking my time is short and um, I, I'm gonna save the bunny, I'm gonna save the bunny project for next time. But this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek because it takes a few minutes and um, we are going to uh, do that the next time. So we're gonna be using the macrame cording and then I will, this is it. I'm just gonna show you this. There's all the different pieces to put them together, but I'm gonna have, I'm gonna wait because I want to give you guys 
time this you remember we did this a little bit ago this is my um oh, for for fork sake this is what i put all my um utensils in when i'm decorating uh, but i'm going to use this to draw a name for the explosion album so if you um entered in um, you put flutter box into the description and um, if you engaged in my live last week I put your name in here because I so appreciate all of you um, joining me on my crafting journey so I am going to draw a name and then I'll put it in the comments and um, go ahead and I will message you or you can message me your address and I will send it out to you as soon as I'm done with this. So um, here, let's show you anticipation. This is what you're gonna be getting. This is the box. Isn't that beautiful? And this is the little top. Okay, are you ready? I am, I'm so excited. It's so fun to give away things. Okay, who is it? Oh, Renee Blackwell. Renee, you get it. So, Renee, send me your address and I will send this to you. I hope you all had a great time hanging out with me today. I absolutely loved hanging out with you. Uh, if you want to um, follow me, I am on Facebook, Instagram, and I have an Etsy shop. And all you need to do is type Jane Nicole Designs. And Nicole is N-I-C-O-L-E. Um, we decided when uh, I picked a name that it was my uh, both of my daughter's middle names. And so, um, we we went with it and that's how we um that's how we uh spelled nicole so yay renee i'm so glad <laughs> i will get this to you as soon as i can so thank you so much for watching and you guys have a great day i hope that you get to enjoy um the creation and see what you're you're out i know the the weather's getting super um cold but you know what go out and enjoy yourself you guys take care and we will see you next time